Hello. Uh, welcome to our uh, session on the Transparency Initiative, uh, updating and introducing the technical and interface community. Uh, my name is uh, Naveen Vembar. I'm the IT Director for the Integrated Award Environment, and I'll be uh, introducing our discussion today. So uh, first, a little bit of logistics. Uh, if you want to post questions, there's a Q&A dialog box uh, in your, uh, in, in your uh, window. Uh, feel free to post questions uh, into that dialog box so we can look at them, answer them uh, as the session goes on. Uh, we'll, we will be posting a summary of the, of the questions and answers after the event on Interact, along with the uh, actual presentation itself. Uh, the, if you want the presentation as we're going along it, during this discussion, uh, there is a files box on your uh, Adobe Connect window that you can download the PDF of the discussion as we go forward. Uh, so, and again, you know, we will have everything up on the Interact site, and if you have other questions after the session, you can always get to us at iaeoutreach at gsa.gov. Okay. So as I said, uh, my name is uh, Naveen Vemar. I'm the IT director for GSA, uh, GSA's IAE uh, uh, program. Uh, uh, under, under me is uh, Pamela Miller, the IAE transparency champion and data manager, who will be uh, talking with us uh, in about you know, five or ten minutes about uh, the actual specifics of the technical interface, uh, technical interface community and how we're being transparent using uh, the, that organization or that community as well as GitHub and other uh, uh, tools. So let's remind ourselves about a couple things uh, around IAE more generally. So um, IAE's mission uh, is, is really to get, uh, to develop this common in, in environment that uh, gov these government-wide systems around the ward really can use. Uh, the, you know, this, the intent here is to, to help streamline the award process as a whole uh, and uh, to manage the data that is central to the uh, government-wide uh, government efforts around the award centrally uh, to the same data standards uh, and, and uh, you know, reducing sort of cost burden across the government, uh, across government agencies by doing this sort of in one place. We also uh, are facilitating uh, transparency because much of this data that we at IE manage is actually open public data. Not all of it, but a good, uh, good big, huge swath of it is. And so part of what we want to be able to do is make sure that that data is usable, not just by other government agencies, but by the public at large. So uh, our vision to uh, execute on that is we, right now we have, you know, 10 systems, uh, SAM, uh, SAM.gov, FBO, FedBizOps, uh, FPDF being sort of the most recognizable of names. Of course, we also have the uh, past performance system. We have uh, systems such as a, a catalog for domestic assistance, all of those are within this portfolio. And you, right now, that portfolio does not uh, necessarily communicate well amongst each other, and we want to unify those, uh, those components over time, both at a data level uh, and a functional level, but also at a, at a technical level, at an implementation level. And so we, we really are, uh, you know, moving in that direction, and transparency is going to be a big uh, strategic uh, pillar in how we get there. So uh, we really want to be, as we, as we move forward, increasingly agile, right? We're working on that right now. We're not as agile as we would like to be. Uh, we are adding more and more agile components to the way we do work. Uh, and, you know, with the goal being that, that we do hit these, these major bullet points, right? We are moving towards continuous innovation and continuous improvement. So when people, uh, you know, say, hey, wouldn't it be a good idea if, right, you know, they're coming through these channels to us, to, giving us these great ideas, and we really want to be able to execute on them. We want to increase our data quality and be, uh, be very vocal about how we're doing that, be very transparent about what we mean by that. Uh, of course, collaboration, that's a big part of the technical and, and uh, interface community's goal is that collaboration, uh, especially around the data and how people use it. And then we also, as we said, right at the core, at the bottom here, we want to be able to, uh, you know, embrace that openness. And that, that means everything from, from using, using open source to developing open source to also simply just being informative and, and vocal and visible uh, as, we, as we execute on our plans going forward. 
Today, uh, we have governance uh, with the uh, award committee for e-government, e uh, so within the CAO Council. Um, the program itself is led by uh, the Federal Acquisition Service and GSAIT. We, we, we are a joint partner, uh, we're a joint partner in actually leading this effort to, to, to development. Uh, the way that we really see this is, is that the ACE it really owns those requirements. They they own the, the the overarching plan, but we own how it gets implemented, right? You know, our goal is to really sort of implement it and meet those those uh, those, those needs efficiently. Uh, we are, you know, we have big scope with IE. We have hundreds of thousands of entities. We have billions of transactions uh, going through through our uh, our systems, and and so we we have a really big uh, responsibility to other government agencies, to taxpayers, to our stakeholders at large, to do well by this. So uh, last year, as we were executing on our plans to develop, uh, you know, to, to hit this vision that we were talking about earlier, we, we looked towards uh, defining a, a conceptual architecture that really says, OK, let's, let's make common what is common and, and create this platform around that commonality that we call the common services platform. And then let's uh, look at uh, the uh, the processes that are uh, individual, right? That, that are actually broken out, and and break those out into to, to smaller chunks that we can execute on, using that platform. Uh, uh, one of the big parts of that is is actually supporting uh, all of the those processes through business level APIs that we're going to be publishing out to the world. Uh, and, and that, in another way, is how we're being transparent, right? We're not just going to say, hey, here's the code to do this, but it's also we, we will give access to people to use those business uh, comp components external to, uh, to IAE for the purposes of bettering how we do this work across the board. So this is really sort of how we intend to unify over time. Uh, and so anybody who's heard, heard me talk in one of these sessions before has heard me go through these in great detail. but. You know, uh, all across these, our architectural principles really are our guideline, our 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 uh, fence posts that we really want to kind of work within as best as we can. A number of these are within our, our intention with each other, and we want to really uh, figure out where where is the best way to use apply different principles in different locations. Right? We know that uh, you know being open uh, doesn't mean that we're going to tell everybody how our uh, what our security holes are going to be, right? Like, you know, that's obviously not what we want to do. So, so we have to be judicious about that. And so, you know, within all of this, we really do see that, you know, being open, treating data as an asset, and, and you know, providing this effective user experience, all of those things are, are really uh, pushed forward by being transparent. So today, uh, we're going to be talking about what the Transparency Initiative is doing at this point, and give you all an update on how uh, on uh, what it's been working on. And then we also want to introduce the Technical and Interface Committee, which is really a broad, uh, open community of people who are interested in using our in our data, um, and you know, and having discussions about how to use that data, and how how that data is going to change over time as as requirements change, uh, and so forth. So to that end, I'm going to uh, introduce Pamela Pamela Miller. Uh, and she is, uh, as, as we said earlier, the transparency champion and data manager for the integrated award environment. And uh, so at this point, I think I'll hand it over to her so she can she can take the reins. Hey, thanks, Naveen. Everybody, this is Pam. Um, uh, Ken, if you wouldn't mind, stop sharing. I can take over and share my screen because we're going to get into a demo soon. Thank you. OK, um, give me a second while I share my screen. Um, as Naveen mentioned, um, I'm the transparency champion. Um, and let me take us to our slides. Um, let me take you, um, sorry, let me, let me arrange my screen so I can give you guys the best view. Hold on one second here. Oh, sorry. Give me one second. Here it is. There we go. OK, that's to give you guys the best view possible. OK, so I wanted to take us through. Um, uh, Naveen was mentioning that um, you know, we wanted to give you, we seek today to give you an update on the transparency initiative in general. So Naveen started that by providing the overview of our environment 
And I think giving some really good and solid reasons of why we want to be open. Um, to be transparent, we're not only, it's not only about we're just going to throw our code out there and throw our documentation out there. We want to take it that one step further. Um, he mentioned our architectural principles. I mean, we want to build to add value, and we seek to be open because we actually seek your feedback, and we want you to be a part of our implementation. So in this transparency initiative, we're, we're creating all the foundational activities around that. And so one of our outputs of that um, on this slide right here, the recent work, we created OpenIE as one of the outputs of our initiative. <clears throat> so around OpenIE, we're also building a lot of processes, um, as Nadine also mentioned. We don't want to be too open, obviously, um, releasing um, you know, vulner vulnerabilities or um, you know, discussing them in any way, of course not. We want to strike a balance. We're creating processes around um, you know, when we when we release documentation, code, um, you know, API management um, areas, we want to make sure we have a process established to make it safe and secure and um, you know easily done. We want to do it the right way. So anyway, the recent work here is we created OpenIE. It's a GitHub site, and we put um, repositories there. And so we have three repositories so far. It's the hope was to consolidate our other sites of information, including the SAM API repository and our IAE architecture repository, which some of you may have seen. We released uh, some of our as-is architecture elements, and we released our 2B conceptual architecture a while back. So let's hop in and let's get right to the demo here. I, I want to show you what OpenIE is and um, why we're doing it and where stuff is. So I wanted to start today by giving you this demo and um, giving you, let's just take an overview of the site and the general content we have on the site so far. Um, this is an overview page, so there's basically five or six areas, as you can see. There's an about IE using the site, our actual repositories, and we have a developer resources section. Now today I'd like to spend um, most of the time in the repositories area in the developer resource section. But now, and also we want there's a general page on our systems and our contact information and uh, what's next for um, OpenIE. That's the, uh, the place where you guys can tell us what you want to see next, basically. So just real quickly, um, so our architectural principles, we reiterate them here. Um, I like to think that's because we really mean them and we live by them. Um, this is a kind of a page of general about IAE, our principles, um, just a very high level overview of our system in case somebody um, hits the site and they're not very, they're not acquainted with us in any way. Using this site, I want to take you just here real quick. Um, we consider it a two-way street. Um, we want to let you know how OpenIE can help you. Um, what we have out here is, a, um, is mostly documentation. We don't have actual any code um, posted to our repositories yet. What we have is mostly um, documentation, specifically with the SAM API. We have our um, SAM data documentation. FPDS data documentation is coming soon, and we also have our architecture. Um, so that's how it can help you. It can give, give you some more information about our documentation, hopefully in one place. And I think as Naveen was alluding to earlier in the presentation, it's not about just throwing out our documentation and putting it on there. We really want you, for example, on the SAM data arena, I, I can't wait to do a better job with our documentation so our end users and the overall community can understand the semantics of our data. It's very important to us. We want you to be able to understand why it's put out this way, how it's used, and how you can better use it in your systems and your applications that you develop with us in the future. Um, so that kind of leads into how you guys can contribute to OpenIE. We want your feedback. We want to hear about if our documentation makes no sense or if you have a, a specific question about what we said. We want to hear back from you. So um, later on, I'm going to show you how you can do that. But that's, that's basically what using the site's about. Um, what's next is just a page for what's next. And I want to uh, discuss what's next later. But for now, I'd like to take us through, um, let's go through the developer resources area real quick. <clears throat> um, this we have right now, as you see in the left-hand navigation, it's pretty much all about SAM, using SAM data, extracts, web services, API, what have you. The reason that is is because we started with the SAM data 
And in reference to the, um, the technical and interface community, what we've done is we had a, a SAM-specific interfaces and extracts working group. However, we scaled that up to work with all of IAE. So that's um, part of the user community we have in the IAE technical and interface community. So what I did is we, we put, we had a lot of documentation on Interact and our GSA's Interact site for a while. So what we did is we ported that over to GitHub so we could have, begin to have all of our documentation in one place. So that's why you see the big heavy SAM focus here. That's not our plan. We want to, um, we're starting with the FPS data documentation. You know, as you can see, that's coming soon. We're going to be putting FPDS, um, um, you know, specific information about the atom feed, et cetera, et cetera. That's coming soon. So, and um, all our other systems data will be coming. There's documentation about the data, how you use it, how to download it, et cetera. So just let me quick take you quickly through these pages. If you want, in our developer resources area, we're going to um, have, for, and, and SAM is the model, so we'll do pretty much um, the same with all of our applications data um, in the existing environment even, just a really high level resource about what the data is and what's it about. So we have here an introduction to SAM entity data, uh, SAM exclusions data you can see down here, and basically where to get SAM data. And then for the using data extracts, we explain about um, what extracts we have and the processing times, where to get them, and the access levels. And we also have a number of tools available. So if you want to know about our mappings, we have field mappings, the data types, we have our data dictionary, we have some sample files, and other tools to um, help you consume our data files. And let's hop over to web services. This is pretty much the same, but it's geared towards our SAM web services. So we have two kinds of web service, an entity management um, web service and an exclusions web service. And we give you some high, very high level examples of um, how they can be searched, et cetera, et cetera. We provide the endpoint, the WSDL file. Um, we have a web, ser uh, web management uh, like a, a tutorial. So that's a really good resource. Uh, we also have information about our exclusions web service, what have you. And we also, um, down in the middle of the page, we have a lot of information about our test environment. So um, you can see our test IDs, um, and we have endpoints in our test area. And so also we have a tools list, that web services tutorials. I recommend it if you want to get up and running quickly in our web services. Um, check out that. It's pretty useful. The SAM Functional Data Dictionary is there as well. And also a specific, oh, you see a spelling mistake there, um, web services field mapping. Um, so if you want to um, check out the tags and how they're mapped and everything. So that's that. A brief page about accessing SAM data um, for elevated, um, for official use only or sensitive access. Um, it, it requires a role on your system account with SAM. So we provide information on how to get that done, the background in this page. So that's what it is, um, that's specifically with SAM. So this is our main developer resource section. As I mentioned, the data documentation for FPDS is coming soon. And let me take you to another developer resource, our architecture. So this is our, um, um, one of our uh, repositories in um, OpenIE. So we, I just want to take you through it real quick, and then we'll go to the SAM API also real quick. So here's the IAE architecture, and you can see as I click to this page, the interface change. Um, we're in the actual repository on github.com right now. And so this is our IAE architecture repository. As you can see, let's take a, let's, um, we can look at the other parts of the screen later, but let's focus on just what's here, these files. You can see there's a folder for as is, and we have the architecture, you know, some images and our business architecture here, some process flow diagrams, as you can see. Many of you may have already seen this. We also added recently a tech docs section, and that's, these are the um, pages that we were looking at earlier, the uh, sample extract files, the web services, mappings, you know, things like that. So I don't want to spend too much time here, but I just wanted to provide this as an example. This is one of our repositories. Of course, it's open, open to the public, as is OpenIE. So um, that's our architecture repository. Now I want to click back to developer resources again. And let's take a check, let's take a, let's just check out the API. Now some of you may have seen this, a lot of you, many of this community are actively engaged um, in giving us feedback on our APIs. 
um, this is the SAM API page, and basically we provide an overview of the APIs. We go through some API basics to give you some general um, orientation with how we're set up, uh, specific calls and a field reference, and also a feedback link. So um, in the API basics, you can see that we just give you example URLs, um, information on retrieving entity information, et cetera. And on the API call page, um, we just give some information about um, how to get the registrations API, for example. We also have a field reference. So these are obviously the same fields that we're referencing in all of SAM. So this um, gives a field reference for those public data fields that you'll get in the result set of the API. So that's, this is a very brief overview of OpenIE for now. Um, I just wanted to make you familiar with the uh, developer content that are, what, that's there. We have a number of resources. So about throwing it over the fence, we want to do a better job in this documentation. Um, we want to uh, make it easier easy, I shouldn't say easier, they should make it just easy for the community to understand what we're talking about when we're talking about a change in the data, why we're doing it, when we're doing it. You know, it's very important to us to um, manage our current environment while building our new implementation of IE, um, you know, all the processes of the systems coming together um, on one platform and building efficiencies there. We want you guys to be part of our implementation. So it's not just about throwing the documentation over the wall, here it is, whatever. We want you to give feedback on our documentation. So when I ask for that, um, here's the link for feedback. This is just in the API area. I want to use this as an example of active feedback that we've been going forth and receiving in the SAM API environment in particular. Um, so many of you have seen this before. Um, I want to go into a little bit of the feature features and functionality of GitHub today. Um, I'm a little bit worried that I might be putting you, some of you to sleep because you're already very familiar with GitHub. Uh, and some of you might be like, whoa, I've never seen this. So they might think it's useful or probably in between. So I, I want to try to balance this as much as I can. But what I'd like to do today is just take you through the issues area and what we have in a repository in GitHub. So as I mentioned, we, we have essentially repositories of documentation right now. Um, in the near future, we're going to be publishing the initial code base um, of the Common Services platform. That's going to happen um, around the release, the first release of Common Services. Um, so that will be there for you to comment and um, fork or um, clone into your own environment to check us out that way. But for right now, I want to go through issues in our code base um, with our documentation. So when you open uh, a repository, if you go into the the code area, this is all the code for our SAM API uh, GitHub site here. So you can see there's include files, layouts, um, the, uh, the data, the YML files, you know, everything's here. Um, SAM, we have a directory with the actual like markdown files of those actual pages that we produce our documentation in. So if you want to see our code, you know, here's an HTML doc. Um, here it is, basically. Um, you can uh, fork it, download it, uh, comment in if you'd like. We're not getting a lot of that, though, and I think there's good reason for it. It's just basically HTML development. What we really want your feedback in is the actual documentation. Um, if you see error messages uh, while using the, so, so we're getting, you know, intermittent 500 errors here. So it's also, you know, we want you, we want to hear from you basically. So I want to take you through the navigation. So if you look at the traffic on this site on issues, there's 20 actively open issues right now and 26 closed issues. We've been up and running on APIs for a few months now. And so I think we received some really great feedback from you guys, and you guys are making it better. So we, we want to just extend the, imp uh, the invitation for this community to help us with our implementation, not only with APIs, with our code, with everything, with our documentation. Um, and so that's. This is how we do it with issues. Um, this is one of the ways we're going to do it. So when I say issues, it could also be feedback, comments, um, you know, what you want to see next, anything like that. So I, I want to give you just kind of a sense, like um, request for registration information for bid-in. There's a lot of back and forth that we're going through with all of these issues. Um, we're, we're responding to you guys. You guys are responding back to us. It's going really well so far. Um, 
because of your feedback, it's a better product. Our APIs are a better product. Now you can um, post your own issue. Um, the way you do that is just click on literally the new issue button, give it a title, leave some kind of comment in here, and then click on the submit a new issue. That's as easy as it is to do it. It will be posted here in the public for everybody to see, and we will get to them. Um, if you want to look at how do I follow issues, how do I watch them, um, following issues is called watching in GitHub Ease. So there's three levels of watch, um, and they're really called notifications. I watch all our repositories because I want to be notified of all communications, of all conversations that are going on. The nice middle ground here is really not watching. So you can be notified if you, of course, if you create an issue, comment or feedback, you can be notified with that conversation thread, or if you participate by commenting on somebody else's um, issue, or if you're at mentioned. So at mentioned is used in the GitHub environment. This is kind of, the, I call it the middle path, not watching. So you don't get too, much, too many email messages in your inbox. I get watching. Um, my email is pretty full of issues and things like that. Ignoring, you can choose to never be notified of an issue. If you choose the setting, it's still a great idea because you can go back into our repositories at any time and review all the issues. You can star repositories um, if they're interesting to you. Um, you can fork them, uh, clone them, copy them down into your own GitHub account environment. We'll get to that later. So that's, that's essentially the issues area. So um, this is where, the, you, by utilizing Git, GitHub issues, this is where we seek your feedback back. This is where we want to hear from you about our documentation and our code base and our architecture. Um, so just so uh, we saw the code, you can see our code. Um, hopefully that will get more interesting later when we actually publish some code. You've seen the issues area. Um, pull requests. Let me take you through this real quick. Um, when you look at our code, eventually when we release it, um, the way to interact with us is, of course, by posting issues. You know, maybe you have some general questions about the code. You're not um, making suggestions on the code yet. But if you have do it, go back to the issues and post an issue. However, if you want to um, interact with us and give us suggestions, ideas, help us with our implementation, what you could do is you could fork the code over into your own environment. And by doing this, let me just, um, you know, when I, if I want to copy a repository, I have a choice. Um, you have to belong to an organization or, of course, have your own account. So you can see I can fork it to my own account. Fork means basically it's, it's copying it to your own. <coughs> it copies the entire repository to your own environment. So since I'm already a member of uh, GSA, I'm already looking into this repository. So I can go ahead and fork this into my own environment. I'm not going to do it here because <coughs> I think it will take too much time for us. But you, what you could do at that time is you can manipulate the code. Maybe you're giving suggestions of how to write a line better, um, a module better, or maybe you have some new ideas of how to put something together. Do that in your own environment. Test it. You know, check it out. Make sure it's running. Then what you would do to interact with that, us about that code is you create a pull request. So basically what a pull request is you, um, you, um, you, know, you can choose different branches or forks, and you can discuss and review changes. So effectively what that does, you would pre create a pull request in our environment. Our team will take your pull request. We're going to review it. And you know, a lot of times, and I bet you from this community, especially with what we've had with your feedback so far, you're going to give us really great feedback. So we're going to review it. And we're going to take it in internally. And we're going to, if it's a good suggestion, we want to take it. But, I mean, we're not going to take it. And again, back to the process conversation, we're going to put it into our backlog. We're going to prioritize it and integrate your code stream into ours at a, um, you know, so it doesn't interfere with um, the progress that we're trying to make in our program. You know, sometimes we hope that you, um, if we find an issue, that you guys could help us fix it by forking down the module where the issue is. You guys could correct it for us, create a pull request, we review it, and we put it into the fix. How cool would that be? Um, you know, back to uh, why do open source and why be open in the first place. We want to rely on you for your feedback, and if you can help us fix our code, of course we're open to it. Um, we um, that's. That's a big aspect of, of why we're, we've taken on this initiative and why we, um, I like to think in my own mind, we really mean this. We want to be open. Um, and so that's, that's, let me see, that's pull requests. And just let me give you some general, um, there's some pulse checks. You can check some general stats on how much activity on any repository there is. 
so we haven't had any major commits lately. There's been a bunch of issues um, opened. You know, you can see some general activity here. Um, we also have some other stats. You can go and you can look at the contributors, like how many there are. So this is really nice. We have quite a few contributors to our community. Um, and you can look at how many commits, coding frequency, stuff like that. So you can see how active and engaged um, it is. So that's, that's what I wanted to do today. I wanted to take you through OpenIE and kind of tell you why we're doing it. And, and I wanted to show you just technically step by step how you can um, give us feedback. So um, let me let me see. I think that's about it for the uh, the demo here. I want to um, just take a brief minute and um, discuss what's next for OpenIE. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to release the Common Services Platform Architecture. That's coming soon-ish. I would say in around a month. Uh, give us some time. Uh, we want to um, open it up the right way. We want to um, make sure we're adhering to our processes, and um, so expected in a month-ish, I guess. Um, we want to improve the formatting of our documentation. There's a lot of stuff on there that I want to break up, and I want to um, put documentation that's there to the point so you guys can find the information you need quickly and easily. Um, we're going to create an issue and pull request dashboard. So if you guys go on the site, you can check out, check out 18F-dashboard and see what we mean. Um, the FPD data documentation, as I mentioned, is coming soon. Um, and there's a useful links area here if you'd like to see that. So that's pretty much the end of the demo. Let me take us to um, the technical and interface community. So I just wanted to mention real quick that um, we want to facilitate the communication um, really relating to the building of an operation of our technical components. So we, we, wanted, we wanted to introduce this, um, this uh, feedback and we want to have regular meetings on specific topics. We want to um, you know, have you guys, if you guys are already GitHub, if you guys already have GitHub accounts, please check out our repositories, watch them, interact with us. We'd really love it. Um, we also want to have a lot of ad, ad hoc inter interactions on GitHub and elsewhere. So we're going to come up with um, the technical and interface community. The next meeting is in March. And so we'll, we'll be announcing that on GitHub. We'll also be announcing that we have an email distribution list. So another element that's coming soon to GitHub is we're going to have a self-registration link. Like if you guys want to get, um, if you guys want to get um, emails from us, you can sign up for an email list. So that's what we're going to be um, putting up there pretty soon. Um, so that's the um, a technical interface community. So um, we want your feedback. We want your help with um, building our implementation. So let me make a distinction. Um, you probably are wondering, um, well, we have our stuff in a lot of places. Um, so there's a lot of communication channels, you know, one of which is email. Um, we want to try to get away from email in general. Um, of course, if you have to email us, please do. Um, but we want to keep a lot of our information um, effectively in the issues area. We want to blog. We want to talk to you through blogs. There's a lot of communication channels. We hope the central communication channel is going to be open IEE. However, FSD.gov, if you have an operational issue, that is not the purpose of open IEE, of course. Um, please contact the Federal Service Desk. Um, you're going to get better help there, and it's going to help us understand what's going on with our system. So it's very important that we need use those existing processes. Interact, we still have our IAE Interact site. Um, and we're going to use that for program and policy information, posting these slides and other um, business-related information in the IAE environment. Now GitHub is for architecture, design, and code that, that pretty much make up IE. So these are the three main channels. Um, so again, I, I pretty much said this already. The um, next for open IE is um, these elements here. So I already covered that. So again, um, just the last kind of blast here, um, how you guys can contribute. Please watch issues, fork or clone our co code repository as we just went through. Um, watch our issues, log issues yourself, comment on other people's issues, create those pull requests. Um, and here are the links here. So um, let me pass it to, I think it's a good time to do question and answer. Um, does anybody have any questions for us? So Pam, uh, thanks for that. Uh, a few questions have popped up in chat, um, and Great. I'll answer 
answer a few of those, and I'll talk to you if I need, I need to. Uh, one of the questions is sort of like, is this, is this a replacement for our existing IA systems? And the answer to that really is no. Uh, uh, the, this is really about specifically how we're going to be transparent. Our expectation is that over time that this uh, will be merged into the larger IAE uh, uh, capabilities. Um, but this is really our place for, um, for communication and for, for uh, exchange, exchange of ideas, for exchange of uh, contributions, uh, as you can see here. It's not really uh, our business implementation of our, uh, of our systems. But um, you know what we will be seeing as we go down the line, right? Is that our business implementations will be the, the the actual code behind those implementations will show up here in the Open IE space. Uh, so you know the the expectation would be you know that as, as Pam pointed out, there are a few channels of communication, and and so you can you can see how we're going to be using those different channels of communication around uh, uh, IE information. Uh, uh, you know, and where you can go find things going forward. Uh, the, uh, you know, the way that we see GitHub really being used to add, you know, to, to expand upon that, right, is, is really that, you know, this is for everybody, right? We're seeing, we're seeing other government employees use this to feed back to us. We're seeing, uh, you know, third parties out in, the, out in the world who have an interest in, you know, how do I use SAM data? How do I use FPS data? They're out there asking us questions through GitHub and through other places, uh, or, you know, through these other places. Uh, so, so really, you know, uh, we're trying to, uh, in a lot of ways, in terms of contribution back uh, to our code base, uh, contribution, you know, uh, questions about how to use these, these channels of communication and things like that, you know, we really don't want to make a huge differentiation between, oh, there's a government channel and then there's a third-party channel, there's an external channel, because that's not really to, uh, you know, to uh, a lot of value to us. I mean, what, one of the great things we're seeing is people within our small community communicating amongst each other to solve each other's problems. We really are seeing that, and that's something that we, uh, we want to support. The, you know, so, so to come down to, you know, to how we're going to be using this, uh, using these capabilities, you know, versus, you know, capabilities around GitHub and these transparency channels versus the business, right? We, you know, for example, we may take, uh, you know, the, the systems themselves, whatever whatever the new capabilities around FPDS, right? That system and that capability will be responsible for maintaining data quality for, around contract actions. There'll be it'll be the system itself will be responsible for capturing the, that information from contract writing systems, things like that. Uh, but the other, uh, you know, you know this, these sites uh, may be providing you both sort of how those business rules are actually implemented, right? You know, you could see that in code. But also, uh, from the transparency perspective, you know, I think we aim as we go forward to do things like be more public about our data quality standards, data quality issues, uh, and, and those, uh, those components, right, of, of, or those uh, streams of work, really. Um, one of the things that we would say, right, is that just because we're open source uh, doesn't, uh, does not mean that we are, uh, you know, forgetting about security, right? So uh, the the code itself may be open source, but you know the information absolutely has to be protected. We are we are very very fully aware that there's PII and SAM, there's there's uh, confidential information and in the opportunities management system, uh, and the expectation is not that we are going to be, uh, you know, we're not we're not going to be open about something that we should not be or could not be open about, right? Uh, we are really being careful and thoughtful about, well, even around that, right? So what, what makes those things inherently insecure, right? If, if open sourcing a piece of, uh, piece of code or a piece of configuration is going to break our security parameters, then we will not do it, right? We're actually working uh, with our security folks to define a good policy around that and, and define good procedures around that. So that's, uh, that's really where we're, we're uh, uh, going there. Uh, you know, I, I think what we're really seeing um, is a way to use um, these channels of communication, right? So, you know, we, we place a high value on being open early, right? One of our, um, one of our um, first of equals, right, in, in terms of architectural principles was be open, right? 
Uh, and part of that is, you know, there, there were a lot of reasons for it. One was because one was because we felt like, you know, this is a system that's really owned by the public at large, right? You know, it's a government system, uh, the, you know, it, it holding pub, largely public data. And so we felt, just at a philosophical level, of course, you know, we, we should aim to be open. But at a practical level, we we're already seeing the benefits of actually opening this, uh, opening up our information here, uh, because we, as Pam was alluding to earlier, these implementations of the same API, for example, have gotten better because of feedback that we've gotten directly through GitHub. We, we absolutely, you know, we're told, man, I can't use this API <laughs> like, like it is. You need to go add this, this, and that. And we did, all right? And we already have things in our queue for the next releases of SAM of that API to make that better. And that's really what we want to see, right? In the end, that, that is a user experience around that API that has now been improved. Uh, additionally, we, we are looking at, uh, as, we, as we go forward, um, the release of uh, the uh, this information as, as being open uh, to to help us sort of ensure that people who are maybe going to be third part, uh, you know, I'm sorry, uh, application developers within this platform to know exactly how that platform works, so they know how you know what tools, what capabilities, what what systems you know should be used uh, are going to be used within that environment. Uh, we also want to see this used in other government agencies, honestly. And other, you know, maybe not, you know, uh, there are components here that are actually very valuable, uh, that can be valuable and, and used elsewhere. Uh, or, you know, even, you know, in other, uh, you know, at the state level, at the local level. Um, so we really want to be able to encourage that and, and gain efficiencies over, over time. One of the things that, you know, uh, we've, we've emphasized throughout the idea of third-party development uh, at the API level, right, go build an application using our APIs. And we think that this, this will facilitate that. But it also would allow a third-party developer to come in and, and, you know, put in a pull request to say, you know, you could do this better, you could do this faster, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, be able to use that information. Uh, and Naveen, this is Pam. I think also, you know, in, in addition to what you're saying is we want to be open. We want to have open IE as that space, not necessarily, as you mentioned, for the business implementation, but when you guys start, a, start to develop APIs with us and for us, we want to make sure that you guys know where we're going with the initiative and, um, you know, when we're changing things. We, we want that API environment to be very stable. So just a comment there. Exactly. Uh, so I, I'm noticing a number of uh, uh, acquisition questions, and, and so uh, honestly, like we're not necessarily going to address a lot of those acquisition questions here. The thing that I will say uh, is that uh, to, to remind folks of where we are and that uh, what, what we've done here is that we have awarded the Common Services uh, platform uh, uh, effort, which is really about defining essentially IAE's platform as a service. Uh, you know, inter the internal platform as a service. Um, that we want to, uh, that we're going to be landing all of our future development on. That architecture is what Pam alluded to as being is going to be published uh, in short order. Uh, fundamentally, we just need to go through and make sure we're not, as we said earlier, publishing something that we should be shouldn't be publishing in terms of security. But we'll be releasing that through these channels uh, so people can see what see what things look like uh, and see what we're going to be building. Uh, and so, so you know, that's really where we are along uh, along those lines. You know, that, that platform includes uh, our, everything from our hosting infrastructure, our identity and access management capabilities, our uh, search, our data, database data storage, uh, and our API management capabilities. Uh, and so that whole stack we're really going to be talking about and um, releasing in, in, through these means as well. Uh, the, there's a good question here about data.gov and how we're integrating with data.gov. Uh, our expectation is actually like, of, of course, absolutely, uh, we currently uh, do provide uh, some of our data through data.gov, uh, SAM data, SPDS data. There are links off of data.gov. If you, if you search for, uh, for that information, you, you will find it there. Uh, our expectation as we go forward is that we would expand, uh, we would expand and improve that, right? Uh, there are, there's been a lot of effort uh, around improving how data.gov works with APIs and publication of APIs. And, and so we really want to leverage that as we go forward. So I think those are really the questions that we wanted to address here. Uh, I don't uh, give them. Uh, so if there are any uh, any last questions, uh, feel free to put it into the Q and A box in the chat, and we'll see if uh, uh, we can answer them here.
better. Okay. So, so let, why don't we close up the meeting? Uh, uh, so, you know, thank you for for joining us. Right. Our, you know, the channels that we're talking about here, GitHub especially, right, you know, these are really, there are our techie channels, our, our, you know, our geek-oriented channels, uh, and we're seeing some really good stuff coming out of those, uh, you know, out of those. So, you know, hopefully uh, you on the phone, you know, got some good uh, information about how, you know, you yourself as a technical person or your, your technical team uh, could really sort of contribute to the, uh, the larger discussion. Uh, you know, we do have, uh, you know, like I said, like Pam was mentioning, the technical and interface uh, community, which is also, which is something that will help uh, not only the technical uh, interaction, uh, you know, with the IA systems work uh, work better, but also sort of figuring out when your business, is, you know, when your business will need to align to any changes that the IE kit systems are going to be uh, incurring over the next few years as we modernize uh, the IE environment. Uh, so thank you very much for, for, for joining us. Hopefully, uh, as I said, right, that, you know, you all get your good ideas and you come back and we see GitHub pull requests as we, as we go forward. Uh, and and uh, I'm excited to hear what uh, this community has to say. Thank you very much.